Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI and I wanted to do this live stream last minute because I feel inspired right now and um, my last live stream or after my last live stream somebody told me that I should check out a plugin called Opacity 2 and man, I'm forgetting the name of the company that makes it. Give me one second. Opacity. You would think that I should have gotten this um, this information down, right? Audio, I think it's Audio Modern. Yeah, Audio Modern. So this is a cinematic ambient style plugin, and it's now. This is not a review. I'm not here to give my opinion. Well, I'm going to give some opinion on on it, but I haven't researched this. I haven't done my homework, so this is not a review. But um, I was immediately blown away at the the possibilities that are that are created with this plugin because of uh, how it inspires me as a musician to to create music with other instruments as well. So um, actually, you know what? Let me open the chat to make sure you guys are there watching because I don't see anything. If you're out there and you can hear me, say hi. This is like the your regular spiel. So I don't want to get started until I have a few people that I know are watching and can hear me. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my DAW view. So this is Opacity. I literally downloaded it today. I opened it and started playing. I mean, there's some things that you can figure out. Like right here we have chords. This is obviously a sample. Here's a phrase, here, here are sequences and swells. So I know that I can play those. And down here, um, here I'll close this, turn off this um, camera. Down here we have our, on our keyboard, we have colors representing these boxes right here. So these are our chords, these are our phrases, sequences, and swells. So these are pre-recorded phrases, or these are pre-recorded performances by a real guitarist, and they follow your BPM. Ya comete la maldita naranja. What? You know, I I don't know, I don't understand that idiom. So, what are you talking about? Care to explain that to me? Anyway, um, so down here we have effects. I'm not going to go over everything here. I just want you to show you what I've created so far. Um, so here, we it's in the key of, it says C minor, which this was kind of weird to me. That it says C minor, but I don't hear a C minor being played. So in these blue, key, blue keys, I'm playing the chords. Let me center it. <laughs> yeah, very wise guy, Mark. You know what's funny is that Adrian commented, I have a brother named Adrian, and I have a brother named Mark. So that's pretty cool. So you have these beautiful ambient type of chords. And it sounds like a real guitar, because it is. So then we have phrases in the purple keys. And then sequences on the green keys. So it repeats, it loops. So this is a type of instrument that stands out in the background, but it creates such a beautiful effect.
All right, so I'm kind of skipping over some of these and here are the swells. Very nice. All right, so I put that together. I put some of these together earlier and I made this. It's very simple. Nothing special about it, but I'm going to start adding to this other instruments and show you how something like this could inspire you to create uh, a more complete composition. Hey, Gabriel. I'll try. Very beautiful. So I'm going to add, I'm going to slowly start adding instruments. Um, it definitely needs a piano. Piano and guitar sound great together. Um, since this is cinematic sounding, I'm going to use Keyscape. Where is Spectrosonics? And there is a cinematic piano setting that I love. Where is it? Cinematic. There you go. just has such a gorgeous close sound no this is not free but it's not expensive either this is not a review so I'm not going to go over that kind of stuff oops what did I do oh all right first I need to I need to get the chords I know it's keyscape is not overkill you're going to regret those words soon Gabriel all right, so it's going to start on measure three. I'm going to go over it once just to get the chords. It's a C sus. C sus. C major. C sus, four. Again, all right, so on that part, I need to go over that again. So, F major. D minor. It could be something else, but that's what I'm choosing. A minor. Kind of hangs there. To D minor. Back to C. All right, hopefully I remember that. Let's see who's joining us. Jeanette on the beat. Thanks for joining us. Yes, 99 bucks. 
All right, so is it worth it? Let me see. No, I'm not going to answer that question because this is not a review. All right, um, so I'm going to start recording. If I mess up, who cares? Beautiful swell. Okay, I messed up right there. I said, who cares, but it's okay. All right, and let me go back. It was measure 15 where I screwed up, where this train derailed. So I'm just gonna delete these notes. Um, No, you know what, I'll go back here. So it does a no, this is not noir, although noir would be would have been a good choice too. This is um Keyscape Alley Custom C7 with a cinematic preset. All right, let's let's try not to screw up this time. Ah. So I should let the guitar keep the melody. All right, so let's try that again. I feel something clashing with the with the piano. I'll leave it. You know, I'll leave it like this. played a D on the beginning. All right, there were some timing mistakes in there, which is not a problem because it's MIDI. Oh, hold on. All right, so what I like to do with when I have timing issues is to quantize, but to add humanization or randomization. In this case, I'm adding eight ticks. That's what I usually add, eight nine or 10 ticks of variation. That means that the note can land eight ticks before the, um, before the nearest grid line or eight ticks after, and it randomizes it. So it, it, it's not eight before or eight after, it's within that range. So um, it gives it a humanistic, or humanistic, gives it a human element of imperfection, but Good timing, that's what we want. So I'm gonna, let's see, I'm playing 16 notes. One, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, so good, 16 notes are fine. And hopefully we don't have any errors. Let's listen to this.
Oh, I see one right here. I think I th thought I saw it. Yeah. Oh, that piano is gorgeous. All right, let's keep going. Um, oh, oh, all right, so that pedal right there, that's nasty. That needs to go over here. So let's start from that point again. Okay, I need to fix that note right there. Sorry, I'm starting over. Piano's harmonizing with the guitar. Uh, maybe I don't need these notes to change. And then let's quantize this part. Now you have to be careful when you quantize because in this case, I'm keeping the same rhythm, but maybe you're keeping the same rhythm, but then you add a little ornament on some part that has faster notes or triplets or something. And if you apply the quantize to all the notes, then it's going to mess up some of those rhythms, but not in this case. All right, let's hear the second part. Oops. All right, there's a little mistake right there. It's a lot of mistakes. All right, let's go again. And you can see it too. It's like this change in the pattern. Sorry that your your moment's going to be interrupted a few times. I'm trying to make this as beautiful as possible. I just don't understand how I can mess up so much. You guys don't realize how frustrating that is. Or maybe you do. So I want to keep this pattern consistent. Let's try it again. Sounds like an ambulance. I can already see all these that I need to fix. And then, you know what, I'm just gonna go over it and just make sure all the rhythms are, are correct before I before I um, play it. Oops. Because I can see, I don't even have to hear that some of these are just off right there. Ooh, what did I do? I have to move it all the way from over here. Okay, we're getting close. 
to the end. I think that's good for now. Let's listen to that. Yeah, I am human. Last time I checked. Okay, so rhythmically, it's good. There are a couple of notes right there that didn't coincide with what the guitar was playing, like the, um, the sus force. And I'll fix those in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to adjust the panning and the volume because I feel like the uh, the uh, guitar and the piano are competing with each other in those higher frequencies. So you can solve this by panning. I'll put the guitar slightly to the left and the piano slightly, slightly to the right. That's going to open it up. Let's listen to that again. still a little too loud. Okay, so it was on measure 28 and measure 30 where that that sus happened. 28. Um, bum. And then 30. Hopefully that sounds better. I'll just trust that it's going to sound better. Next, um, I want to add some bass. Um, let's see. I'm going to add an easy bass. I don't get to use this that often. Well, I choose not to use it that often because uh, I already have, uh, I already like using Ample Bass J for most of my projects, but I do love the legato on this bass. Okay, let's. Now I want something very mellow sounding. So I'm going to take out the highs. And to get more of a rounded sound, I want the neck pickup. So I'm going to take off the bridge. Hello, is there any way you can explain or um, how do you get Cubase's audio on your streams? Yes, very quickly. By Loopback. Loopback is an audio routing software. It's really easy. And then uh, let me show you how it's configured. So you create a, a virtual device. You can name it whatever you want. And then over here on your sources, just add Cubase in there. Make sure it's on. And then that's going to go to your output channels. So whenever you're streaming from, say, OBS, you have to add an audio source. And the audio source is going to be called Loopback Audio or whatever you named it within Loopback. It's very, very simple and it works perfectly. I've never had an issue with it. 
All right, going back to this. So I want a very mellow bass sound. Sounds pretty quiet though. I'm gonna add some sub just a little bit. Because I want this to be felt, but I don't want it to, so, uh, I don't want it to go over the other instruments, of course, but that's, part of that is mixing. Um, let's see. So I'm going to be using a lot of legato and some slide, like here on F sharp zero. And then slide down. You're welcome. All right, so let's try to get this right. Um, bass is going to be a lot easier because it's one note at a time. All right. Let's see if I can remember this. That was the probably the first time I've ever done a perfect run. I think it was perfect. That was a, a, a weird note right here, but that's because of the the uh, key switch that I used. So that that was actually really fun. Um, that's what I love about this bass too is that it's easy to get the the slides and all the legato that you, that you want. Um, I love using easy bass when I can. Only thing I don't like about it is not being able to, not having the samples for every fret and every um, every string. Okay, uh, what else? Okay, let's do percussion next because I, I hear like a little like a shaker. Okay. Superior drummer. I really like the Cuban Latin percussion, the shaker, and all the percussion on it sounds good to me. All right, um, Latin Cuban percussion, Easy X. And then I'm going to use the MIDI that comes with it because it's much better than I can do it. All right, so straight four, 16th note, let's try this. And voila, that sounds good to me. I want this to come on in on an important part. So I think when the bass hits the low note, I, I don't know where that is. Let me check. Okay, so it's going to be on 15 because, yeah, that's that's where I see it. Let's give this some color so that it sounds better. You think I'm kidding, but the way that it looks, the way that your DAW looks really affects the way that you perceive the sound. If it was an ugly DAW, you would probably think the sound was cheap. All right, so I want this to be a lot crisper sounding and um, have a lot of reverb. 
So I'm going to go over this. I'm going to fix this shaker. And I usually like doing this. I add EQ, um, effects enabled. I'm just going to take off a lot of this body. There you go. And I'm going to add some reverb to it. All right, I think that sounds good. Maybe that's a little bit too much reverb. We'll see. I'll adjust it right now. All right. Okay, so I need to fix the bass right there. It didn't quite go up to the note that I wanted it to. Okay, so I know the problem. It's this key switch right here. It shouldn't be overlapping to this note. That should hopefully fix it. There you go. Very, very easy to fix that. So um, I do think that the shaker needs less EQ. I mean, less EQ, less reverb. So I'm going to take it, take down the mix. Oh. Nope. Not there. Okay, and then I'm hearing a tambourine in there. That's such a terrible sounding tambourine, actually. Let's listen to, let's see if it gives us more options. Definitely needs reverb, but like lots and lots of it. Let's try EQ. Let's see if that can make it sound better as well. Take off that lower stuff. Oops. Uh, that didn't do much. It's already pretty high. Um, reverb. I don't even want it to sound like a tambourine. I just want it to sound like some crystal breaking. That sounds pretty. All right, where are we going to put it? I don't know. Wait up, wait, 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 wait up. Let's do it again. I'm going to do it on beat four, but on every other beat. See you later, Mark. That was a nasty note in the bass. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, let's fix that. First, I'm going to quantize this um, tambourine. That's going to be very easy. And then I'm going to solo the bass and fix that 
Do do do. Three, four, one, two. Ew. All right, why did that happen? Oh, I see. It's because this key switch started before the note and it overlapped with this one. So let's see if that fixes it. Two, three, four, one, two. There you go. All right, fixed. Yeah, it'll be up by the time it's done. Um, so you'll be able to rewatch this. All right, so bass is good. Percussion is good. Um, what else does it need? I do want drums in it somehow. Like I'm, I, I want this very nice snare with a long transient sound. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if I need brush or what. You know what? I I'm gonna open up a different drum plugin that I never, I don't think I've used in front of you guys before, but I do like it a lot. It's, uh, I'm forgetting the name. It has the word drummer in it, Studio Drummer. Then I'm gonna use a stadium kit because I really like the snare on this one. So yeah, you can hear the snare rattle and it lasts a long time. But these come with really great presets. Here's Ballad. Yes, I'm mixing without a limiter. Um, this is not so much for mixing, it's just me producing music, arranging it. Those are really nice toms. Now the thing I like about this is the snares over here, you have different options. So you can do a roll really easily. I'm using three fingers over here and two over here. All right, hopefully I don't trash this up. I keep saying that, but you know what? It's a live performance even though I'm recording. So um, studio. Drummer. I think that's what it's called. Is it? Studio Drummer, yeah. All right. Um, so I'll start off very soft. Let's see, see where I come in. Oh, what happened to that bass? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Man, I'm running into a lot of issues today. Not really. I'll answer your question right now about the slate trigger. So uh, that was a little, little weird. Uh, this is going to be challenging because these notes are, are wide apart, but there are 30 second notes. Some of these are 30 second notes. So what I'm going to do, since the majority of them are 16th notes, is I'm going to quantize to the 16th note grid. All right. Um. All right, now I'm gonna fix the 30 second notes. So I'm gonna go in here. Do you have slate trigger? 
I do. I don't have it installed, but I I used to use it because I used to uh, I used to edit audio a lot, and I, that's the that's where you replace sounds with uh with the internal with slates samples, right? All right, let me fix this. Thirty second notes. Um, eight ticks, and then yay. All right, let's see if this works. Ba -da -da -dum. Ba -da -da -dum. Da -da. I'm gonna solo this because it's it's, it's gonna make it easier to hear. More 30 second notes. Oh, I can see that that's not aligned. I don't like the way it jumps. I know there's a way to fix that, but I'm not going to take the time to find out how. I should have just played a pattern and just looped it, but I like playing, you know? You know what I'm saying? Um, I need to drag all of those to the right. There you go. All right, something's weird right here. Okay, let's listen to that with the band. I think all of it needs to come down just a little bit, so I'm gonna go to the velocity. What I like about Cubase is you can select all of it and then move all of them at the same time and it does it in a relative way. All right. Yes, I have an Instagram. It's Ruben the Pianist. Ruben underscore the Pianist. Alright, so I'm going to do something like that. Let me go back to it. Um, you know what? I could try retrospective recording. Insert as linear recording. Okay, so whenever I played right there, it's... Uh, no, you know what? I, I want to play it again. I just enjoy doing it. I, I enjoy more than inserting notes, note by note, clicking it in. I enjoy playing it. So, all right.
All right, there's, <laughs> excuse me, there's a few parts where I, that I need to correct there, but um, let's go ahead and quantize this. Um, drums, I'm going to give it a little bit more leeway or a little bit more humanization. But bump, but bump. So I think nothing went faster than the 16th notes on this. And then now, let's see. Um, I, I kind of like that. It's still missing something. I don't know what it is. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You know, I don't know if Studio Drummer supports multi-channel. Let me, let me see. Hmm. I would think so. Um, I've I've never tried to be honest. I'll I'll try to find that out about that. Let's see. But in the meantime, what other instrument does it sound like it needs? Oh, acoustic, acoustic guitar. But um, since we're we're using phrases and patterns that are pre-recorded, I'm going to go ahead and continue in that vein. Let's see. So I'm going to use one of the strummers. Drum acoustic. Let's try this one right here. Nope. So this that sounds pretty good, but I think the the music has more of a driven sound. This has more of a it has more of a step to it. Dun. Good, dun, dun, good. Like it, like it stops. It hesitates. Not hesitates. It stops. Whereas the the rest of the music that I've already recorded has more of a, a forward drive to it. Da 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 da. As a momentum to it that this doesn't have. So I'm gonna try to find something that fits this. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that one. Nope. No. Nope. Some of them even by the name you can tell they're not they're gonna be the wrong ones. What was it called again? Straight eight. No, I just have a fast SSD. I don't know how fast it loads. I think it's somewhere around. And it's not even the fastest out there. It's uh, like 1200 megabytes or megabits per second.
Let's try this one, but I'm gonna have to take out some of that body or else it's gonna be too, it's gonna compete too much. So I want it to be bright. I want it to be more felt more than it is heard, like the actual tones. I like that you can control the um, the balance of the strings as far as which strings you're strumming on, the high ones or the low ones, or in the middle. So that's sort of an EQ in that sense. All right, um, acoustic. And then, so it's already panned left and right, so I'm not gonna mess with that, but I will mess with the volume in a little bit. Hopefully it's the right one. No, you know what, I'll go ahead and lower it because I know it's gonna be too loud. This is gonna start right at the beginning or at the beginning of the piano. I think it should start right here. That didn't feel right. Mm. Okay. Um, what kind of jump perspective do I like? Yeah, I used to think about that stuff. Uh, I would say, um, I guess you have to be consistent in that. Huh? I used to do it from the drummer's point of view, and then I started, uh, I started switching it to the listener's perspective, where the snares on on the right side and um, rides on the left side, and all that. And it was just, it just felt weird. So I think I stick to the drummer's pers perspective. All right, let's try that one more time. So there I played the wrong, wrong pattern. You know, this doesn't feel like the right pattern to me or the right guitar. Sorry, I'm going to change this. I'm going to try strum acoustic too. I like that. All right, let's try it from here.
and I want a little strum at the end. There you go. So I need to move, I need to press this. And then I need to make sure that the mod will goes to the center because I want all those keys playing. Now I'm going to join these. And I need to make sure that that strum comes just a little bit ahead of time because um, it's a slow strum. Whoops, where, what happened to it? Where is it? Oh. It's okay. All right, it's still missing something. It's getting there. Um, now I want to add some more like little ornaments. I don't want to get too long with this video or this, yeah, this live stream because I have to go pretty soon. But um, there's a sound in my head, and um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's like some falling, whistling sound. So maybe like a violin. Okay, you just make. Okay, or a violinish lead at one uh, ambient vocal. Oh yeah, I don't have any. That's one thing I don't have enough of is vocals, ambient vocals. Um, actually, let me see if Omnisphere has some. That'd be cool, actually. Uh, female, of course. Probably soloist pop. Nope. I'll save these. The attack on this is too high, so let me let me go to
I want it to be very, very far in the back. Okay, so um, let me put on. I usually run these channels to a to a um, reverb bus, but in this case, I'm not going to do it because this is not a mixing video; it's just a arranging video. All right, proverb. Pre delay. Want there to be some delay. Where's the mix though? Mix. Size, time, pre delay, CPU, density. Okay, so I'm going to hide this somewhere in the background. I don't know how, but women's. Oh, shoot. Sorry about the Oz. That wasn't an accident. I'm going to delete it. Oh, man. I'm just bringing more attention to it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. You guys suggested it, or one of you suggested it. It needs more more attack or or longer attack. Can I watch the previous after your live is ended? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, this is going to be on my channel once this once this live is ended. Or you can just rewind, I think. I'm not sure. All right. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out where to put that, um, but the sound that I'm looking for, there's a specific sound. It's like a sine wave. So um, I like that in Omnisphere, you can type in a word and it's going to give you sounds that that are similar to that or fit that category. All right. Um, so I'm going to press sign. I'll play sign. Enter. Hmm. I'll save that one. Um, I, I can't see the name on here, but whoever's whoever is is um, messaging me about mixing, can you email me at hi-fi midi at gmail.com and we can correspond there. Um, this is just a difficult video to do this to give mixing advice on. Are you looking for a bell? No, I'm not looking for a bell. I'm looking for like a falling sine wave type of sound. Definitely not that. Let's see if I put falling. Falling, maybe that. That one right there, that's what I'm looking for. Just kidding. 
okay, something like that. And if if there's a sound that is similar to what you want, you can go to sound match, and it's going to give you sounds that that sound similar. And so none of those none of those work. And thus my search continues. I'm just going to see what I've checked out in the past and, and liked. Omnisphere is one of the few softwares, software I heard, I have heard of, but know absolutely nothing of. It's more of a library of presets and sounds than a programmable set. No, it is both. It has tons of sounds. And it has a very powerful synthesis engine that you can combine samples and use the algorithm in there to, sh to create whatever sound you want. It's very powerful. Oh, something like this. But not with that little theremin sound. That's pretty. Man, some of these sounds, I, I want to use a lot of these. I should just go back up to that one that I that I said I really liked. What was it called though? No, not that. I think it was down here. I'm almost there, guys. Why is this happening to me? I, I'm like, I'm skipping over it, I think. Maybe it's that one. All right, let's try it. Not that. So um, it's about time for me to leave. I I don't know if this was a successful um, a successful live stream. I said I was hopefully going to create beautiful a beautiful track. This is unfinished, but it does have an ending. So is it technically finished? Is it ever finished? Um, let's see. Ooh, ooh, that sounds good right there. <laughs> 
Oh man, you can't ignore inspiration when that hits, right? I actually like that choir right there. I just need to, or that women's voice. Um, let me just take out some of the body. I want some of that airiness. Yes, my keyboard is touch sensitive. All right, and I think I have a couple more minutes. Uh, I'm I'm gonna use a new. Hold on, I'm trying to think and look at the same time. I'm I'm a one track mind. All right, where is it? Uh, Music Lab. There you go. LPC. And then audio insert. I'm only trying this right now. Hopefully they'll, they'll give me an um, NFR license to review this, but I'm using bias effects. This is my first time using this. Uh, let me see. I want to use slide and maybe violin, violin sound. That was a preset I, I heard earlier. In the clouds, I, th I think this is it. All right, let's try that. That sounds pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but... Oh, wrong one. Something about that that effect is not making it stand out. I want like more of a grungier sound. Friends, I will finish this later um, because I have to leave, but I'm gonna play it for you one more time. I think the drums are a little loud. The snare at least is, I'm going to drop it a little bit. And then later on, I will, I will finish this if you guys want me to. Um, as for the stems, if you want the stems to this, I will be happy to share them with you for free. Um, just email me at hi-fi-midi at gmail.com and ask me for the stems to 
the opacity to track. Okay, uh, so I'm going to play it one more time and I'm going to leave. And I'll edit those endings. Um, I, I know what it needs, uh, but I'll do that next time. My well, friends, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought about it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll know when I'm going to be on uh, maybe five minutes ahead of time. But uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.